Welcome to your point of contact for the kingdom of God. I'm Pastor Duma Harshaw coming to you from First Baptist Church, 101 South Wilmington Street in the city of Raleigh, North Carolina for a virtual prayer vigil for bringing in the new year. We are so very grateful that you have come to join us. This is a virtual worship experience and we're asking you to join us in your prayers and praying for the state of our world, our nation, and also for respective needs that may come to your heart or come to your mind. And we want you to pray with us as we represent all the ministries of First Baptist Church collectively and use this opportunity to give praise to God, but also to follow the scripture. And our foundational scripture today uh, for this time of worship come from Second Chronicles, the seventh chapter, and I will read verses 12 and following. The Lord appeared to him at night and said, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a temple for sacrifices. When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain or command locusts to devour the land or send a plague among my people, verse 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. I have chosen and consecrated this temple so that my name may be there forever. My eyes and my heart will always be there. Hallelujah for the word of God. We're following the word. We are God's people, and so we call on the name of our Lord to minister to us in a mighty way. And we're going to ask our, our deacon chair to begin our prayer today, representing the compassionate care for the members of our church. Deacon Kevin Howe. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, it is again that we come calling on your name. And God, as we look back on 2020, we say thank you, Lord. We thank you for getting us through this year. We say thank you, Lord, for just being with us every step of the way. We thank you, Lord, and, and we praise you. We praise your name for yet another year, another opportunity, Lord, to call upon you. Our faith has been strengthened. Our hope has been strengthened. And God, we just turn everything over to you. We thank you for First Baptist Church. We thank you for the leaders that have gathered here tonight. We thank you, Lord, for the, the leadership role that each of them play in their very own ministry of First Baptist Church. And Lord, we pray for every member of our congregation, not only the members of our congregations, but people all over this world and all over our state. And Lord, we know that 2020 was not what we had in mind when we started last January. But Father, we look to you in everything that we do. We look to the hills from whence cometh our help, our help cometh from the Lord. And as we pray, Lord, we pray that you will be with us in 2021. Bless all of our families. Bless those who are in need. Bless those who are looking for a miracle. Bless those who are looking for a healing to happen. And bless our bereavement families, those who've had to say goodbye to loved ones in 2020. We pray, Lord, that you be with our families, be with each one of them, whatever that they're going through. May they know that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And Father, we pray these prayers in your holy name and knowing that you have all power in your hands. So bless us, bless our congregation, continue to touch us, Lord, and continue to heal us 
as we go into 2021 still saying hallelujah, still singing the songs of Zion, please sing and lifting our hands up to glory and knowing that God, you are still our God. We put our hope, we put our trust, we put everything in you. It's in the holy name that we pray this prayer. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Deacon Howe. Our trustee board oversees our entire campus and handles our finances and our budget. And at this time, the chair of the trustee board, Delphine Bullock, will offer a prayer. When I first started thinking about what to say, the song came to my mind by Kirk Carr, For Every Mountain. And the words were, I've got so much to thank God for. So many wonderful blessings and so many open doors. A brand new mercy along with each new day. That's why I praise him. And for this, I give you praise. And then the song goes on to say, for every mountain you brought me over. For every trial you see me through, for this God, I give you praise. And hallelujah, I give you praise. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for making all things new. Thank you, God, for all that you have allowed into our lives this year. The good things along with the hard things which God reminds us of how much we need you and rely on your presence, filling us every single day. We pray, God, for your spirit, your strength, and your power to lead us each step of the way as we go into this brand new year. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, Trustee Bullock. And the Christian education ministry covers every aspect in the life of the church for all of the ministries as we are called to Christian leadership, but also called to Christian living. According to the word of God, we're disciples of Christ and representing our Christian education ministry in the life of First Baptist, Reverend Joseph Briggs will offer a prayer. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, we praise your holy name. We thank you, the Lord, for this opportunity to pray we thank you, the Lord, for this opportunity to humble ourselves. For humility is the catalyst for change. And prayer is the outcome of humility. And so we thank you, the Lord. We lift up both our hands to you. Our hands that are full of the dichotomy of the year 2020. For on the one hand, the Lord, we thank you so much for Christian education and how your word, although we have been separated from being in person, how your word has still gone forth, how your study has still gone forth, how we still have heard your word, how we still have studied your word, how we still have learned of you. We just say thank you, the Lord. We thank you, the Lord, for your provision. We thank you that we have found food on our table we thank you, the Lord, that we have been sustained. We thank you, the Lord, that you have kept us. We thank you, the Lord, that you have been a very present help to us. And so on the one hand, the Lord, we say thank you. But we must admit, the Lord, that on the other hand, that for some, it has been difficult. On the other hand, the Lord, there has been pain. There has been struggle. There has been grief. There has been sorrow. On the other hand, the Lord, 
And so we lift up both of those hands, the Lord Jesus, to you, praising your holy name, thanking you, the Lord, that although there has been storms and although there has been contrary winds, we thank you, the Lord, that we have not been abandoned, that you have been right there with us, and that we can say that we have survived. At the very most, we can say, the Lord, we have survived, and we praise your holy name, the Lord, just for keeping us and for protecting us and for allowing us, the Lord Jesus, to be alive and to be present and to be about to see this new thing that you will do. I ask the Lord that you might remember those who have slipped into a state of depression. Teach them, the Lord, that you can bring them out, out and into a state of bliss. I pray for those teachers and those students, the Lord Jesus, that have found themselves ever so stressed. I pray, the Lord, that you might teach them and lead them beside your still waters and give them peace. And I pray, the Lord, for those who night after night after night have endured weeping. Teach them, the Lord, that joy is coming in the morning, that the joy of the morning of 2021 is coming. We believe your joy is on the way. We believe the Lord Jesus in your word. We trust the Lord Jesus in you. We look to you for our solution, for our every solution. We're not so concentrated on a vaccine. We're not so concentrated, the Lord Jesus, believing that the answer will lie in some um, thing of a vaccine, but we believe that the answer ultimately is going to come from you. The prescription is the same that we find in 2 Chronicles 7, 14. We must humble ourselves. We must pray. We must seek your face. And then, the Lord Jesus, you will act on the behalf of your people. And so we submit to that prescription, believe in the Lord Jesus, that change will come if we just follow that prescription, if we continue to pray, if we continue to humble ourselves, if we continue to seek your face, we know the Lord Jesus that you are able. You have, uh, have shown us in 2020 that you are able, for we're still alive. You've shown us in 2020 that you still the Lord Jesus are God, because we are still the Lord Jesus able to move about. We're able to, Lord Jesus, to hear your word. And so we give your name praise. Continue to educate us. Continue to teach us. Continue to allow your word to go forth. And we'll be careful to give your name the praise. It is in your name, the Messiah, the Son of the living God, the, the Messiah, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Reverend Briggs. And we believe that that mission is the heart of the church, the New Testament church. And our mission circle has been busy across so many years, reaching within the church, but also beyond the church walls. And Reverend Phil Broyles will represent that effort as he offers this prayer. Reverend Broyles. Eternal, sovereign, loving Father. Father, we come to you at the end of this year, a year unlike many in our lives, a year in which we find ourselves, Lord, in a position that we did not anticipate, having gone through changes that we could not have foreseen, where things that we took for granted, Lord, are no more or have been disrupted, where things, Lord, that we relied upon have been shaken, Things, Lord, that we look to instead of you, Lord, for comfort have been taken away from us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you have brought us through all of this. And we thank you, Lord, that even though this year did not unfold in ways that we could imagine, it unfolded exactly as you intended. It unfolded, Lord, it, it, because, uh, adhering to your purposes, Lord. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, that everything that you brought us through this year had a purpose. We thank you, Lord, that everything that you brought us through this year serves your will and bends, Lord, to your will for our lives. Lord, whether it be death, whether it be pain, whether it be racism, whether it be the loss of income, Lord, all of these things, Lord, you took us through 
You took us through them, Lord, not to destroy us, Lord, but to establish us and to give us a future and a hope. And we thank you, Lord, for your promise that all of these things that you brought us through, Lord, work together, Lord, to build that hope and to lead us to that future, Lord, that you have promised us. So, Lord, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your sovereignty. We thank you, Lord, for your love. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, for everything, Lord, that you are. Lord, we acknowledge, Lord, that there is pain. We acknowledge, Lord, that there are people that are in the midst of depression. We acknowledge, Lord, that there are people who are wondering and who are confused, Lord. But we thank you, Lord, that you give us in your word that solid hope that we look to you and to your word and put our trust in what you have told us, Lord that know that will give us peace, that will give us joy, that will give us understanding. So we ask you now, Lord, that in the days to come, Lord, that you will keep us as you have kept us in the past, that you will help us, Lord, to see what you are doing, Lord, through the things that you allow into our lives. And that, Lord, even if we can't see, Lord, we ask, Lord, that you would help us, Lord, to trust you to trust your sovereignty, Lord, to trust your love for us, the love that you display through the death of Jesus Christ on, on the cross in our behalf and his resurrection. We thank you, Lord, that until we can see, we can walk by faith, Lord, because your word tells us, Lord, that we walk by faith and not by what we see. But not to be blinded by what we see, but to trust what you say. Help us, Continue, Lord, to use us for your glory, Lord. Continue, Lord, to use us to reach out to those who may be uh, in need of food, in need of pain, and just in need of a loving ear, uh, in, in need of a touch, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be your instruments, Lord, to reach out to them, Lord. Help us, Lord, to fulfill that mission that you gave us, Lord, to teach and to share the love and the word of Jesus Christ, Lord, to everyone that we meet. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity you give us, Lord, to proclaim your salvation, to, to testify, Lord, to the hope that lies within us, to share your love and to edify your people and to lift each other up. Lord. Continue, Lord, to use us. Continue, Lord, to use First Baptist Church. Continue, Lord, to use our pastor, our trustees, our deacons, and all of our members, Lord. All of us are your missionaries, Lord, and we commit ourselves to your service, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the benefit. Thank you, Lord, for the blessing. Thank you, Lord, for the honor and the privilege, Lord, of being your instruments in this world. Lord, we just thank you again for all that you've done in us, through us, and for us. And we look with eager anticipation to what you are going to do in 2021. Lord, we thank you in the matchless, the magnificent, the marvelous name of the one whose name is above every name, your son, your anointed, your Christ, our Savior and our Lord, the name of Jesus. And we offer this prayer at your feet in his name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Reverend Royals. The transitional ministry in the life of First Baptist Church has been in existing for, for many decades now, blessing uh, those who serve, but also those who are in need in our community. It has grown into a phenomenal part of our ministry offerings and Reverend Carolyn Frierson will offer a prayer on behalf of that ministry. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry. Everything, everything to God in prayer. Kind and merciful Father, mm. your grace and your mercy that carries us all the days of our lives. Father, we. Thank you for this privilege, for this opportunity just to join together, to petition you, to thank you for your grace and for your mercy. 
What a blessing it is, Father, that you have brought us down through 2020, through all the trials and troubles that we have faced, God, knowing that as your word says, Father, you will never leave us nor forsake us. Father, this pandemic that we are suffering through, losing the ones that we love, God, Father, we know that it did not take you by surprise, that you still, God, you are still sovereign. You see our hurts, you see our pains, you see our tears, God. And we are so grateful to you that you are still by our side. You are still our Father. You are still comforting us and keeping us through our tears and our sorrows. Father, we just want to say thank you. Father, we thank you for the transitional ministry that First Baptist Church offers. We thank you that we have been able, God, every Sunday morning, every Sunday morning, God, to extend and offer a warm meal and a prayer to those who who come, God, to those who may not be able to afford a meal for the day, God, but you in your mercy and in your grace, you have allowed us, God, to serve you by serving them. You have protected us, God. You have kept us from the, uh, the virus, God, so that no hurt, harm, or danger has come upon us as we reach out and serve them. And we just want to say thank you, God, Thank you for being loving and kind and taking care of each and every one of us. Father, we know that as a nation, Lord, you promised, you made some promises to us, Father, that if we would humble ourselves, God, if your children, your nation would humble themselves and pray, God, Father, if we would seek your face, we know that you keep your word. And if we will do what you ask us to, that you will come through for us mm. each and every time. And we just want to say thank you, O oh Lord. Father, we thank you for every ministry that's represented here, God. We thank you for our pastor, our our every person that have offered up a petition to you, Lord, we ask that you bless them and keep them. Father, we ask that you will be with us and go with us, God, as we come down to the end of this year. We thank you most of all for your son, Jesus, who has given us the strength and the courage. He has been our encourager through his word, we have found the strength to carry on. Through tears of losing people that we love, you have comforted us, O oh Lord, and we are so grateful to you. Father, you have protected our bodies and our minds when we were alone and, and didn't want to be alone, but had no other choice, God. You kept us. Father, in the midnight hours when we prayed to you because we felt fear for God, you were with us. You kept us. And we say thank you, oh God. We just bless your name. And we know that you will be with us no matter what we're going through, because that is the promise that you made that you will never leave us, nor would you forsake us. And Father, we know that if we trust and believe and obey your word, that you will be there. You have always wanted us to trust, believe, and obey, and you will be with us. And we just thank you, oh God, for being who you are, for being sovereign over all things, no matter what the situation is or what it looks like, God. We know that you are there and that you are in charge, for you are the God that is able. You are able to do all things except fail. And we just praise your name and we give you glory and we give you honor and we praise you, oh God, just for who you are, just for who you are 
first of all. And then we praise you, God, for all that you do and in keeping us. And we just bless your name. For it is in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Reverend Frierson. Sister Marion Davis has been a Christian educator in the life of First Baptist Church for many years. It has edified and built up so many believers. She is part of our women's fellowship as women in the life of the church learn what Christian discipleship is all about. And Sister Marion Davis will come and offer a prayer at this time. Thank you, Pastor, and thank you for allowing me to stand in the place for Sister Yvonne Hyde, who could not be here today. May we pray. Dear Lord, how wonderful it is to be in the company of those who can call your name so lovingly, so thankfully, out of their experience with you. What a blessing it is, and I thank you for it. Lord God, I call your name Jehovah God today. All praises, all honor and glory to you. I come to you, dear Lord, in the name of our Fellowship of Christian Women at First Baptist. I come, Lord, thanking you for providing for that fellowship through your spirit and then allowing us to gather together in your name. We have experienced, dear Lord, another year of fellowship and service and growth, and we thank you for that. Forgive us, dear Father, where we have come short. Master, I pray to you in another name. You are our Adonai. Lord, you are our daddy. And Father, as, as women banded together in love, we submit ourselves to your Lordship for the coming year, 2021. Looking forward, Father, we realize there is much work to be done yet. Lord God, you are our supplier. You are El Shaddai. You are our nurturer. You have comforted us through hard times and long times, and we thank you for that, El Shaddai. Look upon our knees yet again, dear Lord. And dear Lord, we ask that you would supply the needs of those who are mourning those who have passed and for workers who are fatigued and who are worn. Dear Lord, we see nurses and doctors we are near the breaking point, and we ask for your strength that you would help them to hold on just a little longer. Have mercy on us all, Lord God. Jehovah Jireh, our God who heals. You promised, dear Lord, that you would heal all our diseases, and we depend on that. And we thank you, Father that you are sending help against this virus that has plagued us. Thank you, Lord. Dear Lord, our glorious three-in-one creator, Lord, we marvel at and praise you for your wonderful creation of womankind. 
As we fellowship together in First Baptist, we have seen that we indeed are fearfully and wonderfully made. In 2021, dear Father, help us to catch more glimpses of how you have made us unique, lovely, gifted, loving, strong, creative, caring, daring, and compassionate. Help us to so serve you that more women in 2021 will see more of who they are in Christ and band together with us in fellowship that glorifies you. O El Shaddai, our nurturer, our supplier. As a mother takes a little baby and nurses, you do the same with us. And we thank you for that personal, loving, caring, nurturing. Thank you for the leaders that you have given us. And then you gifted them so that they can be given as gifts to us. This is wonderful and we thank you for them. This year, they gave so much to the Women's Fellowship Father and we have benefited from that giving and we thank you. Lord God, you gifted womankind in First Baptist to also go out and serve the community, the state, the nation, and the world on the mission field. We praise your name for that. Lord, help us in 2020. More of us to hear your call and to respond to serve the needs wherever they exist, wherever injustice occurs, racism reigns. And Lord, where unemployment still exists, Continue to raise up women, dear Father, to meet the needs of our suffering world. And my special prayer, Lord God, is that may some little girls in 2021 catch glimpses of women in our First Baptist Women's Fellowship, so committed to your service that they dream of being ministers, evangelists, missionaries, Supreme Court justices, North Carolina state legislators, and dear father, that they dream of being pres vice presidents of the United States. Lord God, we ask that all be done to your glory in Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen, amen. Thanks so much, Sister Davis. Praise the Lord. And the Men's Fellowship is another opportunity for Christian disciples along with our Layman's League in the life of First Baptist Church. And Deacon Ben White will offer a prayer at this time. Thank you, Pastor Harshaw. Would you bow with me in prayer, please? To our almighty, all-knowing, all-powerful, and gracious God, we come before you, dear Lord, in a spirit of reverence, a spirit of thanksgiving, and a spirit of anticipation. As the year 2020 draws to a close, and as we look forward, Lord, to the beginning of a new year, it is fitting that we take the time to pause, to reflect, to give special thanks, to celebrate, and Lord, to re recommit ourselves to you. So Lord, we gather on behalf of those saints serving in the various ministries at First Baptist Church 
and on behalf of all of our brothers and sisters in Christ to say simply, thank you, dear Lord. Thank you, Lord, for you have indeed brought us from a mighty long way. We especially thank you, Lord, for enabling us as a body of believers to continue receiving your good news gospel through your servant, Pastor Harshaw, as our city, our state, and our nation has grappled with the impact of this deadly pandemic. Lord, you have brought us to a year like none we've ever seen before. We have faced situations and events that heretofore were unthinkable. But Lord, in the midst of much agony and pain, you, Lord, have shown us time and time again that you are present. You have demonstrated to us that faith in you brings forth results. We thank you, Lord, that you have blessed us with a pastor, a leadership team, and members who have ministered to the needs of families, mourning the loss of loved ones, during a time when we have not been able to pay tribute and say goodbye in the manner in which we have been accustomed. As a church body, we thank you for blessing us with the dedicated saints who have led the way in creating, adapting, and improvising in order for your word to continue to go forward. We are so grateful, Lord, that many of our ministries are continuing to carry out their programs during these times, but also observing the established health and safety guidelines. Dear Lord, we also thank you for the strength and encouragement that you have given us in your word. For your word tells us, Lord, that you indeed will never leave, leave us nor forsake us. As we look back upon the events of this year, it is abundantly clear to us that your hand has been upon us throughout this year. Lord, you know that this pandemic has brought pain, suffering, and loss to many many families and individuals within our church body, within our community, within our state and our nation. Lord, we pray that your word will continue to inspire us to show the love that you've shown to us, the love of Christ to all those that have been impacted. And right now we once again lift those families and those individuals up to you, Lord, and ask that you continue to comfort them, Lord, as only you can, to strengthen them, Lord, as only you can. As we look across our state and our nation, we see evidence that as a people and as a nation, Lord, we are suffering greatly and we need you. But we see the continuing spread of this deadly virus, losing brothers and sisters every day. We see the continuing growth of hunger and malnutrition in our communities and across our state. But we see the growing unemployment and homelessness that affects our community. We see acts of violence towards people of color. We see struggling parents and children. We see the hatred and the division that reeks across our land. And the list just seems to go on and on. But yet, Lord, in the midst of all these very real difficulties, 
you and your word continue to make your presence known. For it is your word, Lord, that assures us that you will never leave us or forsake us. Lord, it is your word that tells us that you, God, are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. It is your word, Lord, that proclaims that you are omnipotent. And therefore, Lord, not one thing happens on this earth without you allowing it. So Lord, as we look forward to 2021, we know who's in charge. We know that you are the God of hope. And Lord, our hope is in you. For on Christ, the solid rock, we stand. Our prayer, dear Lord, is that as we usher in this new year, that there is a revival amongst all of your children to the realization that you stand ready to bring healing to this land, that it is your desire, Lord, to bring healing. But in order for this to happen, we first must humble ourselves. We must pray. We must seek you, Lord, and we must turn from our wicked ways. So Lord, our prayer is that this may be so in the year 2020, 21. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Deacon White, and to all my sisters and brothers for being present and sharing in this very special time. And we thank the Lord for this opportunity. And I want to especially thank our brother Greg Taylor and Deacon Steve Haynes and all of the multimedia team that has been at this since March, uh, securing our ability in our own humble way to reach our congregation and even beyond the walls of First Baptist Church. Thank you, my brother. And thank you for your dedication and the dedication of the multimedia ministry uh, week after week after week in the midst of this pandemic. And so we certainly are blessed. As we prepare to close this time of prayer, we offer a meditation uh, that uh, we'd like to lift up as we stand at the threshold of a new year on the heels of our Christmas holiday and celebration, Advent. And as God has blessed us in order to see this day and in order to be present in this hour, uh, we stand on God's promises and God's word. And I direct your attention to Paul's second letter uh, to Timothy particularly in the, the first chapter. And I'll be reading, and I'd like you to read along with me in your own Bible, whatever translation that you may uh, possess at this time. It's Second Timothy, the second epistle of the Apostle Paul to Timothy, the first chapter. And we will begin reading at, at verse one, where it says, and I'm reading today from the King James Version. Again, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience that without ceasing, I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see then, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in 
thee which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. And this is the key verse. Verse seven, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his awesome word. And what I'd like to offer as a thought as we enter into the new year, is that let us take faith with us instead of fear. Faith instead of fear. And this is such a beautiful sharing uh, between a mentor and a mentee, one who has been experienced and one who is new in his assignments of ministry and understanding his call to preach the gospel and to minister to the people of God and to pastor the church. And the apostle, as he is seasoned and in process of making a transition into the presence of the Lord, uh, he pours into this young servant of God uh, hope and faith and encouragement and empowering him through the word of God that's revealed by the Holy Spirit as he prepares to carry on the ministry and step into a new territory and even a new destiny for himself. And the word was relevant for Timothy as it empowered him for the work at hand, but it also is relevant for, for you and relevant for me as, as we leave one year and then embark on a new journey into a new year, and none of us know what tomorrow holds. Uh, we don't know about the details of the vaccine and what it will do. We don't know how many people will take it and respect the medical research. Uh, we don't know if a mutation might occur. Uh, we don't know what might happen in the larger collection, collection of nations in the world in which we live. But the beauty of this passage and the message in that seventh verse that is so vital uh, for us as it was for young Timothy is that we need not worry about any of that, but rather simply live by faith and trust in what God is able to do. Uh, Timothy was young in ministry. He didn't have the same kind of experience that the apostle Paul had after serving God in many circumstances and for so long, but yet he had the promise of God's presence for his life and for his journey and the reassurance that the same word that supported his mentor was the same word of God that would support him and what he was facing. And don't you know, God hasn't brought us thus far to abandon us, but he will see us through. He never promised that there would not be plagues and conflict among nations and violence in the street and difficulty in finding and securing employment. And he never said you'd never lose your business or lose your mother or your father or your family. And yet, in the midst of all of those human experiences and realities, there is a God who sits high and looks low. And there is a God who has provided a sense of a platform for us as we journey from one place to another, uh, counting not upon ourselves, but rather depending on 
God's provision for our lives. And that's what we're going to need for this new year that that is emerging before us with new hopes and new possibilities. We're going to need to know that underneath are those everlasting arms. And our hope is not in what we can do for ourselves, but rather in what God can do for us. And so the message to Timothy was, Timothy, uh, you can't achieve what God has called you to achieve by living by fear. You've got to release the fear and grab a hold of the faith. You got to believe that God is moving in your heart and in your life. And even in the midst of circumstances that you don't fully understand and to know that God will bring you through. And that's the same faith, my brother, my sister, that we need as we leave one problematic, challenging, horrific year and look forward to a new beginning. We need to take faith in Jesus Christ and in the God who created the universe and the promise and presence of the spirit of the living God into new territory, into a new place and a new beginning and know that God has our back. The Lord is with us. God will not desert us. The Lord has a plan we don't always understand. And as the hymnist wrote, we'll understand it better by and by. But one thing we know is that Timothy had God with him and not just a God that he created on his own, but he had the God who died on an old rugged cross and rose again the third day. You know, in this passage, the constant reference to Jesus Christ as the Lord of life, the King of kings. And Paul understood in his own life journey just how important it is to understand that Jesus died, but he rose again. He rose again, and he's a living Savior, and he is present in the ministry of the church, in the lives of God's people, and the Lord will lead us through. And so we're not filled with fear as we think about what tomorrow holds or the new year holds, but rather God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power. What power is that? That's the power of the word of God. That's the power of the presence of the Holy Spirit. That's the power of God's promises in our lives. And he's given us a, a mind that is agile and able to receive the promises of God. What that must have meant for young Timothy as he heard these words from a, a mentor that was in prison and yet completely free in his spirit and able to celebrate the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of a love that is reflective of agape love the love that brought Jesus all the way from heaven down to make a way out of no way and to bring salvation to our hearts and our lives and our families and our relationship. That's a love that will not let us go. That's a love that shows up in the storms and the conflicts of life. That's a love who loves us just because. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's the good news gospel. And so it clears up your mind and you can push away the obstacles and all the negative thoughts and thoughts of discouragement and depression and despair. And you don't know what God would do, but you know God's going to do something. You don't know what tomorrow holds, but you know who holds tomorrow. And because he holds you in the palm of his love and in his bosom and in his hands, we know that God will see about us and the Lord will see us through. Some people are counting their money and worried about their investments and taking that into the new year. There are others that are worried about how much entertainment that they can gain is going through into the new year. They can't party like they used to. They can't go to New York City like they have. They can't be a part of this gathering or that gathering. 
But you know what we ought to be taking into the new year? <laughs> it ought to be faith in a God that is able, a God who loves us with an everlasting love and has promised, even in the midst of the trials of life, has promised even when the sun does not shine, has promised even in the hour of sickness, of body and mind and spirit, lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. That's our hope. That's our promise. And with that faith, we will then follow God into new territory and new beginnings, knowing that everything's going to be all right. Because the same God who brought others through is the same God that will see us through and the same God that inspires us to keep hope alive and to continue to look up and hold to God's unchanging hand. And so we do that. And we're, our faith is in the Lord. Our faith is in God who's able and then God works through people and institutions and God works through the gifts that he's given us. But behind the scenes is a God who cares and a God who knows and a God who loves and continues to love us. Amen. Well, let us go to the altar and, and we're going to pray now. And, and it's, we enjoy so often on watch night, having people get up out of their seats and come to the altar hand in hand with family members and some come in tears as they close out one year and begin a new year. Well, that altar is where you are right now. You can do it in whatever way you want, but let us pray this new year into being and stand on the promise of Almighty God. Won't you pray with me? Let us bow in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for the promise of your word and the power of your spirit and the fact that you can clean up our minds, not to be negative and fearful and depressed, but free and open in our faith and trust in you. We don't have all the answers, but we come to one who has all the answers. And we just want to, first of all, thank you for seeing about us all year long in the midst of all the challenges and the difficulties and the pains and the sorrows and the losses and the uncertainties and the readjustments and dislocations. Lord, in the midst of it all, we have found that we have a friend in Jesus. And Lord, we want to thank you today. You didn't have to see us through to this point in this year, but you did it, not because we're so good, but because you were so good to us. And we're not ashamed to say thank you, Jesus, for what you brought us from and what you have brought us through and how you're ministering to our needs. And even in the midst of it all, you're still working miracles. And we say glory, hallelujah, for what you've done, oh God. Fill us with faith in your word and faith in what you're doing and faith in what you're going to do, oh God. We can't save ourselves but our faith is in what you have provided and what you're going to provide as we take one step at a time into new territory. Lord, bless our families in a mighty way. Bless our loved ones in a mighty way. See about those who need you the most in a mighty way. We pray healing for those who are sick. We pray for deliverance for those who are addicted. We pray power for those who are weak. We pray your spirit of encouragement for those who are considering suicide. We pray that you'd move in a mighty way for those who have lost the dearest to them. And Lord, lift them as only you can. And your word reminds us that the God we serve is a God of all comfort, who comforts us in all of our tribulation, in the midst of our losses, comfort and bless Comfort your people, oh God. Minister to the needs of those who cannot care for themselves. Look out after those who are up in age and cannot handle their own care. Lord, see about those who have risked their lives for, for others and bless them and keep them and encourage them, Lord, and anoint them with the power of your Holy Spirit. 
And Lord, we don't know what tomorrow holds and we can't see what 2021 looks like, but we can see your hand move in a mighty way. And we stand on your promises. Lord, we drop fear now. We're not afraid of anyone coming after us. We're not afraid of the enemy and all the accusations. We're not afraid of anything that can happen, Lord, because our trust is in you. And as the apostle said to the young servant of the Lord, God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Fill us with your goodness. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Empower us for the living of these days and then use us in a mighty way to tell somebody and to tell everybody just who Jesus is and what you've done for us and where our hope comes from. It's not our money. It's not in our physical strength. It's not in how we maintain our bodies. It's not in taking care of ourselves through all of those things of blessings, but rather it's in your word and it's in your presence. And Lord, it's in your power. We now surrender our lives to you. Forgive us, cleanse us, empower us, use us. And when all is said and done, we'll be careful to give your name the praise. We will give you all the glory and we'll say thank you, Jesus, for what you have done for us. And we believe that the best is yet to come for it is in the marvelous, the majestic name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, we pray. And God's people said, amen, amen, and amen again. God bless you. Praise the Lord for sharing with us in this time. We pray God's blessing upon you, your family, and your journey for this new year.